so I'm just going to give a, a very quick overview of um, what is now going to be known as, as Better Start, which is the uh, National Early Years Quality Development Programme. And uh, I suppose a lot of you will have heard uh, about the plans for this programme, possibly before I did. Um, and so it's just to kind of bring you up to date with where we are now and where we hope to get to over the next coming months and years. So just to say, for those maybe who aren't so familiar with it, Better Start is a new initiative of the Department of Children and Youth Affairs, collaborating with the Early Years Education Policy Unit in the Department of Education and Skills and managed by Pubble. Uh, and its purpose is to establish a single cohesive approach to quality across the early years sector. Uh, the programme is, as I said, jointly managed by Pubble and DCYA, has a direct reporting function into the department. And the primary service option, and the Better Start uh, is, has a number of functions, but as from the point of view of service delivery, it will be to provide early years quality mentoring within settings, working directly with services uh, and with early years educators. So I suppose uh, you'd be all familiar, so I don't really need to spend time on the, the structure of the department, but where we sit is, I suppose, within the early years programme section of the Department of Children and Youth Affairs. And as uh, Brian and Gary would have mentioned, we will be working collaboratively with our colleagues both in, the, in both of the inspectorate services. Uh, and we will be working very closely as well. As some of you may be aware, the NCCA are developing a practice guide, a Shield, an Ashton and Shield practice guide, which will be made available to for ourselves as a working resource, but also to the sector. And the kind of time frame for that is about February of next year. So that will be, I think, a really valuable resource for us all to work together. Um, so we will be working within the frameworks of Shield and Ashton promoting quality early learning experiences for children. The, uh, Gary referred to the quality agenda, uh, and a number of measures were, were brought on stream during Francis Fitzgerald's ministry um, to move that forward. But I suppose it's, I would see it as part of a, a longer term progression, which we're still very much in the process of moving towards. So some of those factors, features are registration rather than notification for services, revised regulation standards and inspection processes, increased sanctions for non-compliance, publication of inspection reports, qualification requirements linked to funding, and the quality development support for implementing SHIELD and ASHTER, which is, I suppose, where we fit into the quality agenda. If we're looking back, and I can trace myself right along this arrow, uh, from back to the days when we sat around to develop the first set of regulations, uh, when there was very little development in the sector and it was very largely a volunteer um, uh, provision. Uh, then through substantial, um, partially EU and partly exchequer funded expansion, which <coughs> led to you know, a big capital development programme, which led to a lot of the development of services as we know them today. Then the development of the two quality frameworks, SHIELD and ASHTER, followed between 2006-2009, the workforce development plan, free preschool year, which was supposed the first substantial state access in terms of universal provision of early years education to our youngest children, and the quality agenda. And as I said, this arrow is still travelling and has quite a way to go before we get to where we would all like to get to. But we're certainly, I think, we're, we're moving in that direction. And there is substantial recognition and uh, commitment to developing early education. The evidence you're all familiar with, so I won't labour the point, <coughs> other than to say that high quality services produce a social dividend um, for children and for society. Um, and that, you know, expanding services without attention to quality really is not in the interests either of the children who participate in them or in, of the benefits that they can yield to society. And also, as we know, that poor quality services can have long-term detrimental effects. 
So again, to look at the uh, returns on investment, and I lifted this slide recently from Kieran McKillen, uh, just to give him credit. Um, in terms of the most return on investment is in the earliest years of children's development. I've just come actually from another session where we were looking at brain development and the very earliest months and years of children's lives and the amount of growth and development and learning that happens within weeks and months. Um, and that's the point at which, you know, really high quality uh, experiences for children, both at home and in settings, if they're in settings, really matters. So for us, our, we have a range of stakeholders, many of whom are represented in the room here. Um, obviously, the two government departments are central sponsors to this programme. Uh, state agencies of TUSLA and the National Curriculum uh, Council for Curriculum Assessment. The un in the universities and institutes of technology, which train our staff and uh, early years educators to work in services. Uh, childcare committees and NBCOs with whom we work in collaboration to promote the quality agenda, services providers obviously themselves uh, and the children within those services and parents are a key stakeholder in this group because clearly we owe them a duty of care to their children. Um, we're also conscious that sometimes this, this programme is associated with having been kicked into action because of media coverage. Um, it actually was in planning and preparation for a long time before that, but certainly that acted as a spur, I suppose, to bring it uh, forward in terms of its development. Uh, so we're conscious that we'll be under scrutiny. So what we're about really and truly is building a profession, and I've heard you know, Gary refer to that throughout his uh, presentation. Um, and I suppose what, what makes up a profession and you know as we're aware we're at a kind of incremental stage in that we haven't arrived I suppose at what we would call a fully fledged profession but we're certainly moving in that direction so education and training is fundamental uh, quality standards of practice transference of knowledge to practice which I suppose is, is key to our particular service career opportunities and job security progression opportunities continuing professional development, which is central to any profession, quality assurance, and professional recognition and esteem. And those are all of the building blocks that need to be in place before we can truly call ourselves a profession and be recognized as such. <coughs> so just in terms of the Better Start organization, um, it's, as I said, jointly managed by DCYA and Pubble, national manager, who's myself, we have three national coordinators and 30 early year specialists who are currently in induction and preparation with a view to being active in services early in the new year. The government commitment to the service is start up and operational funding till the end of December 2016. We're confident we will continue beyond that, but that's the commitment that we have to date. It's a national initiative with a centralised management and coordination brief. So we have a coordination brief across quality interventions uh, across a number of organisations and sectors and a, a collaborative, I suppose, way of working to achieve that. Our mandate is to work with and coordinate all state-funded quality support. And in order to do that, we'll have close working relationships both within departments and across departments. The Better Start vision is a national service that delivers state-aided supports based on the SHILFA and ASHTA frameworks to early years services in a coherent and consistent way. And I wouldn't for a moment underestimate the challenge of doing that. The, if we go back to my little arrow, a lot of that uh, development has not been consistent and has not been coherent. It has been responsive either to opportunity that was grabbed as Silda Langford might say, at the appropriate time, um, and other factors, other drivers, including like labour market uh, drivers and equality drivers, not necessarily focused on children. Uh, so we're trying to, I suppose, correct that in some ways now, to bring a consistency and a focus on children's better outcomes. So we're ensuring that services are of high quality in order to attain that. So the components of quality, again, as you would all be aware, is evidence, 
Uh, we have the evidence for that. We have the standards and frameworks. We have the education and training in terms of our workforce and that is growing and developing. Uh, and now what we need to do is implement that in practice inconsistently. So in terms of just to introduce you, I suppose, a little bit to our team, they are a team of high caliber uh, early childhood education graduates and postgraduates. Uh, an honours degree was the minimum bar in terms of recruitment into the service and at least 50% of our staff have uh, postgraduate qualifications in early years, further education um, and work with early children. They have a breadth of experience across all aspects of education and care, not obviously each individual, but collectively as a team, we have a range of experience working with right across the uh, birth to six spectrum, uh, right across the whole spectrum of children's uh, abilities and uh, special needs. They have skills and experience in leadership. Many have worked in other mentoring roles with voluntary organisations. We're guilty of pinching them from a number of people in the room. And uh, we have skills in terms of leadership and uh, management, uh, tutoring, lecturing. So they're, they're, they're a highly skilled bunch of people. Uh, and also they are commitment, committed, as are we, to their continuing professional development. So as I mentioned, the Asher and Shield Practice Guide is in development. Um, we were lucky enough, I suppose, to meet with uh, the team working on it yesterday and uh, just in terms of where it's at at the moment. So it will focus on seven pillars of practice which are part of process quality. So learning environments, interactions, planning, assessing and documenting, play, parents as, and leadership and ethos, I suppose, as a foundational pillar on which all of the others effectively rest. That will be uh, largely an online resource <coughs> with, from the looks of what I've seen, wonderful materials, most of which have been gathered in Irish settings, demonstrating excellence of practice. Uh, and it will be made available, um, as I said, the target date is about mid-February. So we're really looking forward to that. Again, we're all very fond of circles and nests, thanks to Yuri Brenner. So for us, children are at the centre, um, and they are the, the primary focus of our responsibility and our, of our endeavours, working within the sector with the ECEC providers and parents, working collaboratively with city and county childcare committees, with national voluntary organisations, and with the wider education sector, and working within the context of state policy and provision but very much with children as the, the focus and purpose in terms of what we're about. So from our perspective, our philosophy and approach is that children are at the centre always. Uh, we, we work in a strengths-based way, working from where people are at, working with services, working on what they can do to improve, what they do well, what they can do better. We will work in respectful partnerships and collaborations based on best evidence and best practice. Um, and seeing quality as a continuing cycle of an improvement rather than a destination or an event. Continuous professional development is central to that. Obviously, our mentoring will contribute to that, but there are lots of other aspects of continuing professional development that our colleagues in, across the sector contribute to. Uh, and we'll be focused on outcomes and results, which clearly we will need ourselves to demonstrate in terms of justifying our own existence and continuance. The role of the early years specialist specifically is to work directly with the early years services to build their capacity to deliver high quality services to children. And uh, so they will be working on site with practitioners, uh, you know, supporting them in their work, introducing them to resources and materials, modeling, mentoring, providing feedback and their purpose is to support a range of diverse early years settings, working in partnership with management and staff to develop and then implement their own quality improvement plans. Um, from our perspective, obviously, we're just a part, a small part, relatively speaking, of the, the jigsaw that will contribute to the development of quality. The services themselves are the people who will actually attain and deliver and achieve quality, uh, and we will be a support in terms of that endeavour. 
So I suppose people may ask why a mentoring model? And again, I suppose coming back to our evidence base, what we has been demonstrated, I suppose, internationally and nationally here, is that coaching and other on-site individualised professional development has emerged as more promising than a lot of other strategies in terms of development and uh, assuring quality. What's definitely, I suppose, has been demonstrated is that training into practice doesn't necessarily always deliver the kind of quality that is required, that there is a, a potential a gap, an implementation gap, and that is something that we would hope to fill. And um, my certainly my vision is that in doing that, we will create a multiplier effect because then within services, those skills of mentoring and development and quality awareness will be fostered and will continue in terms of the development of an ongoing development of the professionals working there. Um, and as we know, the degree to which that professional development is actually personalised and individualised is a key factor in terms of making it a reality. So in terms of the mentoring process, the uh, way that we envisage working will be to enter obviously into uh, building relationships. Our service is engagement with services, a totally voluntary choice on the part of services. We're not operating under a statute. We uh, offer, uh, you know, I suppose in, in some words it's uh, useful to use the word free, somebody said to me, because so little is free in terms of training and development these days. But it is a volunteer service and it does require commitment on the parts of services to commit to quality development and to do the work basically that's involved in that. So when we join with, with services we'll be conducting an initial joint assessment uh, in terms of where people assess their quality to be currently and where, what areas they would like to develop and promote quality in to a greater extent. We'll then set goals and create a written action plan uh, so that people have a clear map, a clear pathway in terms of where they're going in terms of developing quality. We will use tools of observation, modelling practice, co-teaching, watching, reflecting, using video to, in terms of feedback. So a range of tools, again, that have been tried and tested both internationally and here in, in our own country. We will have access to and will make available uh, a range of articles and other resources, both practice guide, but a range of other uh, very valuable tools that uh, are accessible and again um, often freely available. And we will participate and support the development in co cooperation particularly with the City and County Childcare Committees of the development of communities of practice. I suppose in terms of what makes a confident mentor and obviously this is what informed our recruitment and development so experiences, levels of experience and education that are higher than average within the sector and again uh, uh, as of yet um, degree led workforce is not the current average within the sector. We're certainly moving towards a qualified sector but we're not there yet, we have some road to travel. Experience as a practitioner, all of the people working with us have worked in services and in mostly in a range of services which is really important uh, and have also worked as trainers and tutors and mentors and have a high level of content knowledge. Uh, their experience working with adult learners uh, have experienced themselves as adult learners and you know these are the characteristics that have been found to be valuable and effective in terms of <coughs> coaching and mentoring models. So the key tools and resources we'll be using are as I said the evidence-based quality frameworks that we have in place practice guide, which certainly in my view, having had the privilege of seeing some of it, is very accessible and will be very useful. Standardised validated instruments in terms of assessing quality, observation and feedback directly in, in services, setting specific goals and action plans, and working in a person-to-person -person model of support and collaboration. So I suppose within that, the things we're considering are maximising impact uh, and to that, uh, in that regard, I suppose initially we're going to be trying to work with larger services where there are greater numbers of children. 
Uh, we will have a particular focus on social inclusion and areas and children uh, of or children living in areas of designated disadvantage. Again, because the research evidence is that those are the children who most benefit from uh, high quality early years education. Uh, obviously, we're working in a, a context universally of value for money and efficiencies. Uh, service readiness, and again, that's about decisions and choices that the services will make about whether they want to engage with this quality development process, because it will be challenging, there's no question about that. Support structures and resources, both ourselves and our colleagues in national voluntary organisations and city and county childcare committees and in education and training. Uh, sustainability, I suppose for that, for us that means that quality development that continues after we're gone, after our period of engagement and that there is, it's actually built into the services in a way that is sustainable. I suppose we, we have a challenge uh, across the sector to rebuild trust, to ensure that the services that we offer to children from birth to six are of high quality and provide the assurance and trust to parents that their children are, are receiving the quality that they need and that they deserve. So our key messages, I suppose, are that quality is essential, it's not <coughs> optional. Quality is something that is a requirement of us all to deliver on. Quality is a professional obligation. If we're going to call ourselves a profession and quality is an obligation that we are, uh, you know, adhered, that we must adhere to. Children, I think we'd all be agreed, deserve the best that we can provide. And we have the evidence, we have the knowledge, we have the tools, we have the resources to make quality a reality. So it's time to implement. So I suppose for us, we're at the beginning. Uh, somebody said this to me is a, is a really, I'm really excited about this. This is a really positive initiative, a positive commitment in a time of you know, financial restraint that the government would make this kind of commitment to quality, I think speaks volumes. <coughs> So we're very happy to work with you all and we look forward to doing so. Thank you.